Hello everyone and welcome back to what will be the final part, part 3 on our weathering series doing this tangent HO scale boxcar here. Uh, for this part we're going to go ahead and we're going to knock out the roof, the hand painting involved with that, uh, do a little rust work on that and just get it ready to go over and uh, do the last step will be uh, chalk and powder weathering which I'll do a little bit later on this evening once this paint dries. Uh, as with the last time I've got three different uh, rust colors here. We have like a more orangish rush rust. We have a brownish kind of rust here, and then we got just a, a brown kind of thing going on there. And I got a little bit of black just to kind of mix in here and there, just to get a little bit of a darker shade. So with this, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get started. I'll probably hit it with a pretty good bit of this medium brown kind of rust color. Kind of just hit everything around that I want to get. I'll come back in with some. Uh, Darker brown in spots, a little bit of lighter brown, uh, lighter rust color in other spots, and uh, just kind of work it a little bit. Just kind of look at my uh, photo I got here in the back to go off of, just to give me a rough idea how I want to do it. And uh, well, that'll be about how we're gonna do it here, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and do this the same way I did the last video, where I'm gonna try and speed up the part of me actually doing all the painting, because it, it would be almost a half hour, 45 minute video of me sitting here trying to do all this little stuff so I'm just gonna shoot it and speed it up as I did with that maybe throw a little backing music in there if I can figure out how to do that but I'm not gonna speed it up so much where you guys can't see the actual little paint spots going in here and there as I go so uh, here we go guys <laughs>
All right, everybody, we got our roof all painted up now. Um, pretty much just kind of try to work in segments, you know. Come through with your kind of medium brown color first and then start working in. I, I like to work in the darker brown a little bit around the edges. It kind of helps if you do segments because what, what happens is if you, when you put down that uh, first brown color, it takes a little bit to dry. You kind of want it to dry out a little bit so you don't have too much of that... Uh, roof color kind of popping back through but just kind of work it in and then you come in with a little bit darker and kind of throw that around there a bit and uh, really i mean it's it's really just a lot of kind of throw some paint on the brush and kind of throw it up on there and if it's off a little bit you take it and wipe it off on the paper towel and uh, just kind of come in a little bit later you kind of use a lot of a dry brushing kind of technique here and then uh, I also have these little micro brushes. I think these are like a beauty supply kind of thing for the ladies to use on their paint their face or whatever there. But uh, they really come in handy with uh, doing all this like little dots and stuff. You can just kind of come in with them and just kind of zing them across everywhere. And it'll just kind of give you these little spots. And then too, like when you're working on like a little high, to, uh, high ridge like this here, you come across with the light color. And you just kind of work it in the dark color there across. So uh, nothing really too fancy about it. The biggest thing about doing like this part of it is just kind of keep working on it. Don't like panic if it's not looking right. I, I really can't stress that enough because this is one of those things when you first start doing it, it's gonna look it's gonna look pretty bad, you know. But you just gotta kind of keep messing with it and just keep adding a little bit to it and eventually you'll get there it's just kind of that building up the layers together there so i'm gonna let this dry for a few hours and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the next part well the last part of the series which will be the chalk weathering and uh i'll go ahead and show how i do that and all that you don't have to do a clear coat in between this with the uh, crystal clear i i've done it before but it doesn't seem to really make much of a difference when it comes to how well the powders take or stick to these um, no matter what I do, it seems like those just don't really stick on too well. And when you do the last coat of clear, it seems to kind of come out of it a lot. You guys will see that when we get to that next uh, next part here. But uh, the magic of video, that'll be starting here uh, probably right about now. All right, everyone. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, start our last step here, which is our powder weathering. Uh, chalk powder. Uh, they got pastel powders. There's, there's all sorts of different ones. I just use this. Um, it's from Smoky Mountain Classic Castings. I think it's Smoky, Ma Smoky Mountain's the name of whoever sells this stuff. I got it a few years ago when I first kind of got into weathering. I've been just using it ever since. I've tried... Uh, a few of the other brands and it doesn't really seem to matter which one you use you, you kind of end up with the same end result with them so just kind of shop around a little bit and find whatever you like but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on this here this is just kind of a more or less just something to kind of blend everything together and, and kind of bring it all into into one deal here um, this powder really tends to kind of fade away a little bit when you do your um your last clear coat so having it on there's kind of it's you could spend a boatload of time making it look really good with the powder and then when you uh put your clear coat on a lot of that disappears so i don't like to get too carried away i just kind of like to throw a little bit on the truck area and at a door a little on the roof etc just to kind of highlight things a little bit and that's about it really it's it's nothing more than just kind of another another layer to things another dimension if you will and kind of helps bring everything together that's that's the big thing with weathering is just kind of using layers to kind of add a little bit with each one and it will give you a good overall look um, now you can drive yourself crazy with each individual layer if you're not careful but i try to keep it a little more sane with it and just do a little bit here a little bit there kind of use a little bit of each uh technique to use the best part of it without making myself nutty spending forever working on each little part so go ahead and just kind of take it and brush it on there it's it's a very light effect you know, to a degree but it's also kind of heavy too uh, the one thing with this is you definitely want to go heavy <laughs> because of how much will disappear when you clear coat it so don't be afraid to really get in there and just really really wipe this stuff on because it's a lot of it's going to go away you just kind of you know work in a few 
a few different colors, get some light, get some dark, just kind of keep hitting it with everything. And when that clear coat comes in, it'll it'll really kind of smash all that together, and that's that's what we want. So one other little thing I like to do with this, I'll kind of take and kind of just I've got paper down here to help with the cleanup on this, so I just kind of take and I get a little bit of stuff in the brush here, a little bit of powder, and knock it down on the paper a little bit, just kind of mix it in a little bit more. But all we're trying to do is just add just another little bit of dust to this. Nothing nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy. Just another another piece of the puzzle. For all you that are watching along, I'm wondering if this uh, ambulance siren I can hear because I got the door open today. We get some nice weather. I wonder if that's coming through on the camera or not. If it is, hey, uh, you know, little, uh, little background noise never hurts. I guess that would just add to another level of the modeling experience is uh, working quietly and enjoying the noise of the neighborhood. Now, a lot of these cars, it seems like there's a lot of dust and stuff come out of the door area. I don't know if it's from when they sweep them out or, or what you might have there, but I've noticed that in a lot of photos I seem to see is that there's a lot there. So kind of work a little bit, a couple different colors in there just to kind of add to it a bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of this rust red to the door here just to kind of... Give it that a little bit more dirty look. Oh, that ain't bad. I kind of like that. That looks pretty, pretty snazzy. I'm pretty happy with that. It's kind of. So another little bit you can do here is when you have spots of rust, you can kind of take and we already kind of streaked them down with paint once already, but we'll just kind of take and gently brush over the top of that just to kind of add in a little bit more. Because again, that will a lot of that will fade out, but there'll just be a little bit left, and that's what it's all about with the weathering. I'm pretty happy with that side. Let's go ahead and let's uh still a little work on the roof here. Now, the roof is kind of a, again, you could really spend a boatload of time and drive yourself nutty trying to get this roof right, but uh, with how much time we already have into painting on the roof, I think that clip was almost 20 minutes. We're going to, I'm not going to really get too wild with it. I'm just going to kind of come in here and just get a little bit of, a little bit of some darker colors just to kind of accent some of this in between and just kind of give it dirtiness to the roof overall. This is all kind of blackish right there. We'll just kind of work that in. Kind of fade that all together there. And for this I'm using a fan kind of brush here for this just to kind of work that over the top. You can do it on the side of the car, but it's I mean, it really doesn't do all that much, so just kind of work that over everything. Take some of this red rusty color and just kind of spit it in there a little bit more. It's a good time, too, to get some of the spots where uh, the paint didn't really go on very thick on the top here and you got little spots of silver showing through you could come in with a darker color and kind of knock that bright silverness down in those spots and it really just kind of helps you fix where you might have screwed up in the last part a little bit so that's the thing with weathering everybody it's uh just kind of just kind of play it as you go you you could sit and 
try to copy everything perfect, but it'll, it'll make you crazy, and I, I don't like to be crazy when I'm trying to enjoy a hobby, so I just want to get something that looks, that looks the part, but uh, didn't make me nutty. I hope, uh, hopefully you guys watching this will kind of pick up a few things, and or heck, maybe even give a few of you the uh, gumption to go ahead and uh, try and do some of this. It's not really all that hard. It's just a matter of taking your time and kind of seeing it through till you're done. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to shut the camera off and do the other side of this and clear coat it. And then uh, once I have it clear coated, I'll let it dry for a little bit. I'll get one last clip of the car with the clear coat and everything and uh, probably get a clip of it running in a train as well. And I'll uh, get this all edited and uploaded so uh, y'all can enjoy it there.